just want to take some time today to uh, uh, look at some verses in uh, I think in this uh, time sometimes we have um, some feelings and um, that are categorized as maybe ha hapless helpless and hopeless and my point today is that we might have those kind of feelings but we are not hapless helpless or hopeless if we believe in Jesus Christ we are not hapless hopeless or helpless and I want to use for a text um, uh, Acts 27 and 28 I'm not gonna read all that but you can read it it describes um, the shipwreck that Paul was in and then they land on the island of Malta and a snake bites him and uh, I just I think that fits with kind of feelings that some people might have um, during this time so um, when we use the word hapless what does that mean well some would kind of say that it means like you're cursed or you ran out of luck and I want to use the story to kind of um, give some uh, meaning to those words helpless means that you're without help you 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 there's nothing you can do you're helpless in the situation and hopeless has to do with being overwhelmed with the situation and there's really nothing beside yourself even outside of yourself to help you so you have hapless helpless and hopeless in this story if you want to turn to Acts the 27th chapter you'll find uh, these these uh, situations if you look in the 27th chapter you find that Paul is part of a journey that he at the beginning of the journey said told them not to go because it wasn't the right time he anticipated uh, danger maybe in the Spirit of God he knew that danger was coming um, and he advised the people not to take him. He was trying to get to Rome, but it was the wrong season to go across the Mediterranean Sea. And so he he has this um, this um, this knowledge, so so to speak, uh, from God that he, not to go. And anyway, the whole trip is kind of a disaster. They 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 get they get their, they go into rough seas. They have. All kinds of danger they have all kinds of situations and uh, and yet towards the end of that journey um, there Paul says that he has been told by God that not one hair of their heads will be will be damaged they, they won't lose one hair so to speak so the God that knows the hairs of our head the number of the hairs of our head has told Paul that that none of these men or none of these passengers none of these workers on the ship no one will get will lose their life but anyway towards the end um, they 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 see some land and they head towards the land and the ship kind of gets to get that point and it starts to break up and you have this um, you have this uh, situation at the end of chapter 27 that says in 41 that they struck a reef the vessel went to ground um, it remained immovable and um, it started to to break apart and so that's a hapless situation there it it just happens there's there's uh there's just nothing they can do they're they're kind of at the mercy it almost feels like they're cursed and uh, and so they have this they have this moment where they where they feel hapless um, that that everything's everything that could go wrong has gone wrong and um, then they land on the on the island and um, there's some people there and they have a big fire they gathered around um, and they made a fire and as they make the fire as they gather up the wood a viper comes out and bites Paul and, and so the people around there think that he's cursed. So they're, they're almost thinking that he's hapless in this situation. 
but they're thinking he's helpless. He can't do anything to help himself. He's going to die. Um, they, there's no, no, no answer to that. Um, and then a little bit further on, you, you see Paul uh, responding to the people that are sick there, and, uh, and he heals them. So there's a certain kind of hopelessness that they can't even do anything themselves. First, there, there's, there's a, something that's come over them. They feel helpless that they can't do anything. And they feel hopeless because there's no way out of it. Now, I want to interject God into all those places. To the hapless situation that Paul is in with the shipwreck. To the helpless situation when he's bitten by the snake. To the hopeless situation where people that have diseases or or conditions that are seem hopeless to them. How does Paul respond to each of those? And I think the answer to when we have those kind of feelings, whether that be a hapless feeling, a helpless feeling, or a hopeless feeling, we can see the answers in how Paul talks, how he just does things. First of all, in the in the first thing where it's the hapless situation. Um, The shipwreck is 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 a bad thing. There's there's no way around it. It's just a bad thing. Um, it says even it's so desperate that even the soldiers want to kill all the people on the ship because they feel responsible because there's a lot of prisoners there. In the in the centurion, he intervenes and says no one's going to get killed. Um, maybe the centurion is very smart because he might have thought, wait a minute, we're we're at an island. The people aren't going to be able to escape, so let them swim to the island. I don't know exactly why, but he wants to protect Paul. It, it does distinctly say that. He wanted to make sure Paul was under his charge to get to Rome. So, so in this situation, it seems hapless. It comes upon them. And yet here we see Paul, who just before this brings out the point that God knows the hairs of their head and not one hair of their head will be damaged. They won't lose their lives. So even in the hapless situation, Paul has the response that God is with this situation, that God is intervening in this situation. In the book of Romans, it says that God works in all things for the good. You see, all these things can happen to us, even something that feels like we're out of luck, so to speak, and I don't know if Christians believe in luck. I don't really believe in luck. I just believe things happen. But if you look at it that way, you think you're out of luck or you're somehow cursed. Even in those moments, the scripture tells us that in all things, God is working for our good. Now, it might not be exactly how we envision good, but God is at work in those things because we are his child. Just like a father would be at work for the good of his child. He he doesn't he doesn't think of it any other way that he would always be trying to help his child look ahead to to benefit his child, do what he can to facilitate um, good things or, or lessons to help the child learn lessons. He's always working for the good, an earthly father. So why would not a heavenly father do the same? Do much more. Jesus in fact says that that your Heavenly Father is greater than you. We also know that, that Jesus says that God knows even the sparrows of the sky, and He cares for them. So how does He not care for us, even in any help, hapless situation? When we feel helpless, it means that we don't have anything in our ability to remedy the situation. We're, we will try, but we, we're helpless at that. And Paul, in this passage, how does he respond to that? He responds to the helplessness of the situation by trusting God. It doesn't say he immediately went into a panic because he'd been bitten by the snake. It doesn't say that, that, he, that he ranted and raved or, or carried on after he was bitten by the snake. What does it say that he did? It says that he shook 
the viper off. He shook the viper off. I think there's something quite powerful in the simplicity of that, that Paul simply shakes the viper off. What did that, what does that show us? That his trust was first of all in God. His trust was first of all in God. I think we can look at um, a, a psalm that might have this idea. Psalm 108 um, is the one I want to use. Psalm 108, in, and David reflects on two things here. He re reflects on the foe. He says, grant us help against the foe, for vain is the salvation of man. Meaning that there is a certain helplessness in our condition as a man. But then verse 13 says, with God we will go valiantly. It is he who treads down our foes. I think this is a would be a verse that Paul would almost cling to in this situation. That in his own abilities, he has nothing to, no weapon against this viper. But in the trusting of his God, in the providence of his God, that he knows that God has said that he will go to Rome. He knows that God has ordained this whole journey and protected him on this whole journey. So even when he's helpless against this viper, his God is powerful and mighty. His God is powerful and mighty. As, as Paul is a son and daughter, as a, he is a son of God, he has the power of God in his life. Last of all, in this passage, we find the hopeless condition of a medical condition. There was nothing in themselves that they could do. They might have felt helpless, but even they might have gone to where they were without hope in their feelings. Where do we go when everything seems against us when we have no hope. Hopelessness means that we have no hope. It's gone. Where do we go? Paul himself says this in the Romans, the 15th chapter. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that your hope may overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul is telling us there that there's a hope beyond just a little tiny bit of um, positive thinking. There's a hope beyond that because our hope rests in God. Peter says it this way. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth into a living hope. Do you get that? A living hope. That means that it's alive with the power of God. It's alive because God has given us a new birth into a living hope. That hope is the Holy, is the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. That the Holy Spirit will, will take us to places where we cannot go ourselves and lift us up by, by the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. It, all, it says that in the book of Romans, that the same power is in us that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. In Ephesians, Paul repeats it again. This same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is in you. So that is a powerful hope. Last of all, I'd just like us to think about the fact that what we have in Christ, we have been given so much. And I would encourage you maybe to read the first and second chapters of Ephesians and try to list the things there that you have been given in Christ. You will find over 30 different things that you've been given in Christ. Take time to do that sometime. Because of Christ, we're not hapless. Whatever happens to us. Because of Christ, we're not ha helpless in our, we're in our own abilities, even though we feel that. We are not helpless because God will come to our aid. And finally, because of Christ, we're not hopeless. We have a hope that transcends every moment on this earth and some wet day will take us to eternity. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has given us a new birth into a living hope. May Jesus Christ be your living hope today and forever. Amen? Amen.